Why, hello there. Long time no see. I just got a package from FedEx, but before we open it, let me just do my general introduction. Um, hi, hi, hello. I don't remember how to start a video anymore because it's been ages since I feel like I have put out a video and oh my God, this box is filthy. Wait, 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 wait no, I should Oh no, no. Everything it touches becomes dirty. Take two. Hi, hi, hello. Welcome to another vlog. It's been ages. A lot has happened since the last time I posted. Or maybe not that much has happened. I, I don't know. I've just been preparing for my upcoming shows that I'll be vending at. I've been making new prints, making new charms, unboxing things, grading things. I also changed up my setup in case y'all haven't noticed. My backdrop is a little different, right? These are just blinds that lead up to my balcony. As you can see it's with little cracks as it swings. And I also got a curtain. I installed a little sheer curtain by my window and I rotated my desk. So like, I put up curtains because the direct sunlight triggers my migraines and I have chronic migraines. So it was becoming a little problematic to work at my desk at times. So I got curtains, sheer curtains would be a good solution. That way it filters out the sunlight so it's not as intense, but it still lets sunlight in. So it still illuminates my apartment. It also gives some of my plants the nourishment they need and want. I also rotated my desk because even though I had curtains it was still a bit too much for me and it was just making it really hard for me to see my screen at times. So I was like, let's just turn this bad boy around and see what happens, see if I like it. And I ended up really liking it. It's like my own cozy little corner now. I placed an order this morning for another set of prints and new business cards. And then I have to unbox these charms. But for the most part, the group order I participated in a few months ago, I finally got those charms within the past month. So. I have, let me see if I have them on my desk. I can show y'all so I don't have to like, I don't know, go through a whole process trying to get these things here. I got these magnets made. So I have like these froggy magnets. So these are just flat back magnets and it's just acrylic with epoxy glue. I also have, I also got these potion bottle charms made with like these holographic star clasps, super cute. I'm not gonna take this out of the packaging just cause I'm too lazy to put it back in, but here it is. I also have one more magnet I made and I don't know if it's here, hold on, I have to go grab it. Okay, I got these really cute Plessel and Minden magnets made. I really wanted them as a magnet rather than a charm just cause it was Plessel and Minden. I thought it'd be super cute, but there they are. Is the camera even focusing on them? I can't tell. But they're like super cute. I feel like it's not focusing on them. Hold on. How does this work? Whatever, y'all get the point. So those are the things that I group ordered. I also have another group order I participated in. I have that package hopefully coming tomorrow and those will be the wallets I designed way, way, way back. Finally getting them, I paid the last of my invoices for that and it should be delivered tomorrow according to USPS. So hopefully it gets here on time. And what else? Oh my God, what else? I got a new keyboard and I love it. It's right here, I've been using it. This is the Kidos, Kidos, Kidos NJ80. I filmed myself unboxing it, it was pretty neat. It came with the basic stuff, USB-C cable. Um, it comes with an extra silver knob. As you can tell here, it has a gold knob, but it comes also with a silver one. And I don't know, I got some extra keycaps, keycap puller, switch puller. It was pretty neat. I don't know, I really enjoyed it. It did come in like five layers of bubble wrap. It was like impossible to open, but I don't know. It arrived in really good condition. It sounds fantastic, by the way. It's great. I do have my Boba U4T switch in the spacebar. The rest of the keyboard, they're Gateron Yellow Pros. That's just stock that I chose that came with the keyboard. But my right stab on the spacebar was too loose. So 
I was getting way too much resistance, so I put in the Boba Yuko tea and it ended up reducing some of the resistance. So I'm keeping this in until it wears off a bit and then maybe we can put, um, I don't know, the Gadron yellow back in because I really like the Adron yellows. But I do want to try the keyboard out with all of my Boba Yuko teas. I just don't really have time to sit down and take out all the switches and put them all in. So that's just for like a later project I have to do. But other than that, it's a really great keyboard. Maybe I'll do a more in-depth review about it later in this video, but, or maybe in another video, cause this is mainly going to be a convention prepping vlog. Cause I have my first convention this weekend. Today is Tuesday and the first day of the show is Friday. So I'm gonna be driving up to Dallas on Friday for this show. And it's gonna be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Sunday I have to drive back. And Hopefully it goes well. The expenses for this show really aren't that high, so the amount I need to make to break even isn't too crazy. I just need to make sure I have everything I need and I have everything nicely packaged and ready to go. I have not tested out my display yet. I have no idea how it's gonna look. I'm just, I'm just dumb. I do everything last minute, but honestly, I feel good. I'm not panicking. I think the only thing I need to do is just to figure out how to hang my prints from the photography stand I bought. So I'm gonna be testing that out later, maybe today or tomorrow. But first things first, we need to open this package. I almost had a heart attack multiple times because of this package because I desperately needed it to come on time and it was delayed in Shanghai and then I made it out of Shanghai just to get delayed again in Japan. So I panicked. But somehow, despite the two international delays, it arrived a whole day early. So here we are, we're gonna open this filthy package. Oh, this smells like it's been through hell. It looks like it's been through hell, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I don't know if y'all can tell, but it's like not very clear and that's because they recently changed their little bags to be um, biodegradable or something like that. So they're not clear like before, but they're a little more environmentally friendly now. I also really like how they come in these Ziploc bags. It's really convenient. This is my Jack Frost charm. I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with the Shin Megami Tensei series or like Persona, which is more popular and well-known, but here's Jack Frost. He's a demon you can um, recruit or fight or I don't know, what's the word? Summon, I, I don't remember all the terms, but here it is. Hold on, it's kind of blurry. There we go. From this day forward, you and I are he homeboys. It's like an actual thing he says in a Shin Megami Tensei game. Is it three? Is it Nocturne? I don't remember, it doesn't matter. On the back it says, I'll pound the he ho out of you. So, duality, love him so much. Turn number two. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh no, they're not separate bags. They're just one big bag. There's 150 in here. Let's see. Let's get one of everything. Here is Hu Tao. Oh wow, she turned out so cute. Same design, front and back. I think this is two and a half inches. Next, we have Yoimiya. Also two and a half inches. All my Genshin charms are supposed to be two and a half inches, but she looks really cute. Let me check for artwork errors. Oh my God, there's no white layer in between. I left out some of the white areas. So I don't know if y'all can see. Can y'all see where the white's supposed to be and how it's transparent? That's totally my fault. I'll probably sell all of these as B grades or something or include them in mystery bags. The last of the Genshin charms is Kokomi. For some reason, she's like super faded. That's weird. 
So I ended up getting some plus one mining charms made anyway. I totally forgot I made these. So we have magnets and we have charms. Finally, we have a Teen Titans communicator. Throwback. So many of these. Whoa. I wonder what this one would look like on that. This is so cool. Oh, I wish the glare wasn't in the way, but 70 prints is a lot. so exhausted after putting this thing up like I'm not even done but this took a lot out of me because I'm incredibly out of shape but also it was easier to assemble than I thought but also harder than I thought at the same time I don't know anyway I have started my display test I don't know where I should stand but um, I have two prints up right now so basically this is how I'm going to be displaying all of my prints they're just gonna be hanging up and there's no need to really put covers on them or to laminate them but you can laminate if you want to protect them but I already you know I'm already setting these aside for display purposes so if they get damaged they get damaged we are approaching the day is approaching <sighs> I am so nervous but it's okay I just finished picking up my prints. So they were originally supposed to finish at like five today, but I think they pushed me up to the front of the queue and they just got my prints done ASAP for me, which I'm so grateful for. And let me just show y'all. Unfortunately, I couldn't get them printed full bleed because of time constraints. Honestly, I think it's okay. Here it is. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I think it printed nicely. I think the illustration turned out really nice. I wonder if I should have brightened it up a bit, but I do. I like the darkness. It's the thing. Where in this wall of print should it go? Maybe under here? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, whatever. Here's what I have right now. Honestly, I don't have that many large prints because I haven't been making large prints when I started my shop. A lot of them are smaller ones. So I think I'm going to put the Hu Tao one here and, or I might put it up there, link those two, put one of those down here. And then maybe I can hang something here. Y'all, we did it. We got the business cards. Here they are. They look really good, so I'm gonna open them. Never mind, there's, there's, ah! I can't open this, hold on. 
<laughs> Hello. I struggle with opening most things and, oh, was I supposed to do the other side? Why is this taped? Oh, that's why. That's embarrassing for me. Okay. I ordered a lot of them. Business cards. Front. Back. QR code. Super simple. A card link. Oh yeah, these look great. Hello everyone. I neglected to film myself setting up my display because I was just in such a frenzied hurry to get it together, but thankfully my friend was there to help me. But anyway, as y'all can probably imply, I am at the convention. I'm at the hotel. I just got into my hotel room. I just checked in. They just got it ready for me. And um, this place is huge. Like, I don't, I don't know if y'all can tell how spacious this room is for like absolutely no reason. I have this king size bed all to myself too. Wait. Let's do a little tour. Let me show you all the bathroom. Here it is. Bathroom. Wowza. And then here is the shower. It's a standing shower. And there's a toilet right there. It's so nice. I'm going to get real comfy in here when I play Shin Megami Tensei later, but oh, it's been a long 48 hours. I feel like I should open up the blinds. Whoa. Well, there's the airport. I feel like I only just now got to like rest for the first time and what feels like forever and I already have to go back down to my car and I have to grab my backpack. And then my hands are so shaky. Well, I don't have my tripod because it's in my car. So y'all have to deal with my shaky hands. I've, I've barely eaten anything within the past 24 hours. So I'm like, oof, I'm jittery. But yeah, I need to go down to my car. I need to grab my backpack because it has my laptop and my tablet and my charging supplies and stuff. And then I have to go back to the artist alley room and I have to grab my cooler bag, which has the rest of my food. And then I'll have to take this print that I bought from another artist up with me too, just so I can keep it safe. The artist is so nice. They saw my black cat tote bags and they loved it so much because it's like their brand. And we kind of have like matching black cat prints. They look really similar. And they bought all of my tote bags. I only had three of them left. Two of them was in my suitcase and one was on my display. <laughs> And they bought all three of them so i'm already sold out of those but that means i can just get more of them printed which i'm super happy about and so um hopefully hopefully this con goes well and i also need to go back and visit their table and buy more stuff from them we should have just traded but it's it's really nice everyone here is really nice so far and i think it's going to be a good weekend also this room doesn't have a microwave so um I made pasta that specifically could be eaten cold. I made it at like 1 a.m. last night in a hurry. And then I had to wake up, I finished at like 2.30. And then I had to wake up at six. And then I took an hour to load the car and everything. And then I was driving up to Dallas by like 7.30. And then I got here at 10.30, cause it takes about three hours. And from Austin to Dallas, it's really easy. You just go up I-35 all the way up to the airport. Yeah, now, now I'm here, it's like, what time is it? It's one. So I have three hours until the con starts. Well, not until the con starts, I think. Yeah, until the con starts. That's when our deli opens for me. So I have three hours to just relax and breathe and maybe take a nap or something after I get all my stuff though. So let me go do that and then I'll see y'all in a bit.
Hello, I just got out of the shower and I already ate dinner, but honestly I was trying, so I was trying to vlog during um, the Artist Alley hours today as I was selling, but honestly I couldn't really find a good opportunity to vlog. I feel like I was really focused on just like seeing if anyone was gonna walk by, if anyone wanted anything and interacting with people. And I just didn't really feel comfortable vlogging there. So I don't have much footage, but day one of Anime Dallas Artist Alley is donezo. It was okay. It was pretty slow, not gonna lie. I thought it was gonna be a little busier, but also I've never been to this con before, so I don't really know what to expect. And I don't know, I did okay sales wise, I would say. I don't know. I made back my table already, which is really good. So. And it was only four hours. It was like four to eight, which is kind of odd. So I hope that tomorrow, since we're doing a full day, there will be more foot traffic and therefore I'll make more sales. But so far people have been really nice and it's just been overall a very good experience. And I feel like the con staff is actually very helpful too. I don't know, it was a pretty chill environment for the most part. I do. I do feel like a lot of people are doing more like window shopping, more browsing than actually buying at least today, but that's totally okay. Hopefully things change a bit tomorrow and I make more sales, but for the most part, I think today was good. Today met my expectations, but more than anything, I'm like really excited to um, play on my Switch in bed and eventually knock out. Good morning, friends. This is day two of Anime Dallas. I have not had anything to drink, so I made some tea. It's still pretty hot. And we are about to head down, and I think I'm gonna try buying some breakfast stuff or like a sandwich or something. Today, the Artist Alley will be open for eight hours, so it's gonna be a full day instead of a half day. And I already could barely manage the half day, so I have no idea how I'm going to do this, but I think, I don't know, I feel like it'll be fine as long as I have stuff to entertain myself with. So I'm gonna bring my Switch and I'm probably gonna play some games on it. But I think the big thing for me is taking a lunch break, so I'm gonna make sure I get some food. So um, why don't we start heading down? so it smells like dang as hell outside. <laughs> we have enchiladas today that I just got delivered, so let me put this down. And then turn this light on.
Hi, hi, hello. I am back home from Anime Dallas. This is actually, um, today is November 15th. I got back last night, but I was so tired. I just, I tried filming, but nothing that came out, but nothing that came out of my mouth was as coherent as I wanted it to be. But anyway, what y'all missed is that I unboxed a package last night and basically my wallets came in. I don't know. For those who have watched my videos, you may know that I've mentioned that I was making these wallets and well, they're finally here. And they're so cute. So these are basically ID wallets. So there's a space here for you to put like an ID in and you can just leave it here. And there's also little slots in the back for various cards and stuff. And a place here to put some money. So coins or folded up dollar bills. So anyway, these are the wallets. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna price them, but they're so cute. So, so, so cute. I'm so excited. I'm gonna be bringing these up with me to Emerald City Comic Con, which is coming up really soon. It's really catching up to me. So I'm going home for Thanksgiving in about a week, which means I have a week until I need to pack all of my stuff here because I'll be at home and then I'm going to be flying out to Seattle from my home with my mom back in Houston. And so I'm gonna be flying out on the 30th at the end of the month. So I have like two weeks until then. And the con is basically a few days after that. So basically, how, how is this gonna go down? I am going to have to crunch again and make a lot of prints if possible. I I, I have realized that I need more prints. I, I, need, I need more prints. I sketched out a lot of stuff when I was at the con, so I, it's just a matter of seeing how much I can get done this week, and I'm getting quite a few things. Well, I'm gonna try to get some things shipped to the house, so I'm getting stickers shipped to the house, and I, I really sincerely hope that, you know, they get, they get done in time, and it's just a lot. I'm, I'm a bit stressed out, I will admit. I made wallets. I'm already thinking about this con I have coming up. I'm very stressed out about it. I've also never really flown for a con before and it's just a lot. So I need to think of a good way to pack my suitcase. Thankfully, since I went to Anime Dallas with like my, my apparel, my t-shirts and my tote bags, that took up all the space in my suitcase. But because I'm not allowed to sell apparel at Emerald City Comic Con, I won't be taking that with me. I might, I might try bringing my tote bags with me. If, if, if I put them on display and it's not a significant part, they might, they might just let it slide. Cause I've seen people sell apparel and stuff like that at New York Comic Con and I think they were okay with it. So I'm gonna try just bringing my, my remaining tote bags with me cause they're really popular. And I'm also going to bring my phone grips with me this time as well. And hopefully they're okay with that as well. So, and I'm also going to be debuting my Teen Titans communicators at Emerald City Comic Con. I, I hope, I hope they're a huge hit. I, I hope people like it. And I also, what I learned from this past convention is that magnets are a relatively like rare thing, I think, or they're really new. So people haven't seen them often. So people were so like mystified by my little magnets. So <laughs> they're really cute though. I'm glad people like them so much. I think maybe I should talk to you all about how I actually like manage things behind my table. So I kept most of my stock in my suitcase and then I had a box with all my prints in it so I can easily grab it. And then I had like my, my, my cello bags easily reachable. And I had all of my charms like bagged up for the most part on the side behind inside one of my wire cube compartments. So I can easily grab them. And for change, I used a pencil bag. Here it is. This is a pencil bag I got in middle school. I've been using it ever since. Some people like, um, people bring like cash boxes that you can lock. People also these days, I feel like prefer fanny packs cause you can keep them on hand and take them with you everywhere. But I was just using a pencil bag. I was pretty, I was pretty chill with it. Like I, I wasn't, I wasn't really scared of people stealing from me because Everyone was really nice and the staff was really present. The staff was really helpful, but the overall crowd was really good. It wasn't like, yeah, you're gonna get robbed here kind of kind of feel, so. Yeah, so basically I kept all of my change here and I kept it ordered. So I got, when I went to the con, I had a few 20s, got some, for some reason my ATM would not dispense 10s. So I had a lot of fives and ones. I ended up running out of ones, but thankfully my, my one of my neighbors was willing to trade with me. So I was like, hey, do you have some extra ones? I'd be willing to trade some fives for those if you're okay with them. And and she was totally okay with it because they were running low on product that they needed ones for change for anyway. 
So there's that. Someone also tried paying me. Uh, they asked me if I had change for a hundred. If you go to a con, please don't show up with hundred dollar bills. But I, I felt bad for her and I was like, okay, you know what? I'll make change for her. So change, easily accessible. Just bring some dollars and they add up, they really do. So you don't really have to worry about running out, but I do recommend bringing more ones than you think you'll need. And for my card payments, I just had a, I had a chip reader, like a square chip reader. I had that sent to me like years ago when I bought it and it was super helpful. One thing that I was, I was just, I was just so thankful that they had Wi-Fi at the convention. It was free and it worked. So I was able to process card payments, but car payments, card payments, but in the future, I think that I should invest in a hotspot of some kind, just so I know I have internet. So that's how I kind of manage things behind my table. I spent a lot of time kind of just sitting there, as you all may have seen in the vlog, and just waiting for people to walk by. It was a great learning experience. I, I did some testing with my display. It wasn't too bad, but I do think it could have been better. Like a more display shelves, I think would have been good to elevate some of my products closer up to eye level. I also think I need more prints because it's not that you need a lot of prints, but I found that because I didn't have like that wall of prints a lot of artists have, you can see behind me. So the display is behind me. So you can, there's like a hole. And because of that, I think that it's easier to miss the few prints that I had. Also because the merch I had on my table on display was so colorful in comparison to some of my prints, it was just really easy to miss. And so one way to combat this was I was doing a test where I was gradually moving my banner display up closer and closer and closer. And I do think if I don't end up having like the kind of wall of print look that I want, I'll just move it like really close up. So when people walk by, they have to like look at it. And yeah, that's how the con went. Sales wise, it was pretty good considering that this was like my first con. Um, I mean, I've tabled a long time ago, but that was like years ago and it was also like a really awful year for it, not gonna lie. Um, just cause there was a hurricane and then there was also a gas shortage because of the hurricane. So a lot of people had to refund their tickets and couldn't come or they didn't have the gas to like drive there. So it was, it was interesting. I also didn't really do that well sales wise there cause yeah, I didn't really have that much merch, but it was still a good experience. But this time I felt more prepared. I had more stock and I did a lot better because of it. <laughs> like, isn't that crazy? When you have more merch, you make more money. But the star of the show was definitely my froggy totes. People love the tote bags. They loved all the froggy things. People also really liked my black cat print and it just sold out. So I, I have to get more of those made, but people love the totes and the sticker sheets, the Animal Crossing sticker sheets did pretty well. My Froggy sticker sheets also did well. A lot of people expressed interest in my witchy sticker sheets, but um, there weren't a lot of buyers because I feel like people who are really into that witchy stuff. The table next to me, they were actually selling crystals and wire wrapped stuff. So obviously that drew their attention more, which is totally understandable. Uh, it was just a bit of an unfortunate placement, I guess. Um, I'm surprised my patches sold. There are quite a few people who are interested in the patches. Even if they didn't end up buying it, I was surprised that people were interested enough in them to actually like look at them and express interest in them, especially at an anime convention. People also really liked my notepads, but they, a lot of people were reluctant to buy it. I feel like a lot of people at this con were just broke. Like they didn't have the spending money because the overall audience was a bit younger. Like a lot of them were really young and there was a lot of parents accompanying their children and stuff. So. Their budgets were stretched very thin, so there were a lot of reluctant buyers. And let's see, Jack Frost charms were popular. My Mob Psycho merch was a huge attention grabber because for some reason I was like the only person there who had Mob Psycho merch. So I'm gonna keep making Mob Psycho merch because I love it. And I have another set of charms arriving by the end of this week, so that's super cool. The staff was incredible at this con. Like they were fantastic. The artist alley hours were fantastic. Like four to eight, 10 to six, 10 to four. It was it was just so, it was such such great schedule for us. And even though I was exhausted at the end of the day, it wasn't like super unreasonable. And I don't know, it felt good having that later start starting at 10, it just felt good, you know? And um, they also gave us free pizza on the last day, which is just great. They were just so nice to us. And I felt really safe leaving my stuff in the artist alley hall because, you know, they were out there on the guard and they wouldn't, they would like, they would check your badges to see if you were an actually artist to let you in before and after hours. So I felt really safe leaving my stuff there. And it was just a really great environment. I do, I do think the con is growing a lot. 
so hopefully it's even bigger next year and i think i saw somewhere that they're planning on moving to a new venue which is great so uh yeah i was it was a good experience i would love to go back and i have a lot of work ahead of me this coming week for this upcoming con i'm so excited to go to seattle for emerald city and i hope i find opportunities to vlog while i'm there in spite of all the chaos i'll be going through but yeah that's it for this vlog uh i hope y'all enjoyed it anyway i have a lot of work to do bye